Okay, so we are using Wee Video. I know there are a lot of different media driven, uh, you know, software and apps and stuff you can use, but I'm going to ask you to use Wee Video for this one because I know it's not blocked. I know how to use it, the ins and outs of it. I've been using it for probably about 11 or 12 years now. It's obviously evolved and gotten way better, but um, I know it very, very well. I did get on last night because they have changed a couple of things since last year, but I figured it all out. I sat at the coffee shop last night when my son was in practice and I figured it out. So um, hopefully I can answer any questions that you have. There are a lot of little extras and things you can do in Wee Video that I'm not necessarily going to go over, but feel free to explore. I'm going to show you what I expect, and then if you want to go beyond, by all means, I'll always let you go beyond, okay? So right now, what I'd like everyone to do is to go ahead and click on Wee Video. And by yesterday, just asking, there's only a handful of people who have used this. I had a couple of gentlemen in third period that used it as a, in an elective class. They had to make movies. Um, once you're on here, go ahead and click log in. And then you're going to log in with Google. Log in with Google. And then obviously choose your account and OK it. If at any point um, you get stuck on something, Ms. Miller will be walking around too. You may have to tell them you're a student. And I've been on a lot of things a lot of times, so they're not asking me the questions anymore. Oh, you can put education. And that you're a student. And then, I mean, if you want to choose some options just so you can get through these questionnaires, feel free. <laughs> And you won't have to do this every time you log in. Just the first time they want to know who you are. And then you should get to a screen that looks similar to mine, except for you're not going to have a bunch of saved videos at the end because you haven't made any. So you're logging in with Google. If you get stuck, please let Ms. Miller help you. The great thing is now that you've logged in with Google, um, Wee Video automatically creates a folder in your drive called the Wee Video folder, and it will save your content in there, which is really, really nice. Okay, so you don't have to worry about, oh, where is it all going? Now, when we finish our video and we go to publish it, we do have to tell them to put the published version in that folder, but um, it's pretty simple, and I'll get through that with you. Okay? All right. So there's... A myriad of ways of starting a video um, this is how I'm gonna show you but again there's always you know six ways of doing one thing so what you're going to do is you're gonna hover over create new or you click that down arrow and then you're gonna scroll down to where it says video and this is super important click full featured editor full featured not simplified full featured editor if you do simplified it's a pain in the butt <laughs> full feature Okay. And it should look like this, except for you have no images. The thing is with Wii Video, once you start using it, um, it's kind of like a holding cell for all your images and, you know, music and sound bites. It just stays in there unless you tell it to delete. So right now you have nothing in there. Okay. The very, very first thing we're going to do, and everyone can do this now, is we're going to create a title slide that includes the title of your poem and the name Maya Angelou. So on the left here, you should see a box that says text. Will you click on that, please? And you're going to choose one of these text boxes. Now, the great thing is before you actually ever put anything in a video, you can click on it and get a preview. This is your preview window for everything, okay? So it'll show you what it looks like. So I would like you to choose one of these. I'm going to choose primary text. And if that's what you want, you're going to click on it and drag it down. Okay. So I clicked on it and I, I dragged it down to text one. And you can click any one that you want here. Click, drag down. 
and I'll show you how to edit it in a moment. I want to make sure everyone gets a title slide. We have started our video by dragging down that title slide. Anyone not get a title slide down? Okay, so I will tell you it automatically defaults. These are seconds, okay? So it automatically defaults at about five or six seconds that you're viewing it. Um, at any time, you can see what that time limit looks like by hitting the play button up here. And that's how long you're viewing it. If you think, ooh, that's too long, we can shorten it, okay? So right now, it's actually, it's right at six seconds. So if I wanted to, I could click on it. I could drag it out to make it longer, like seven seconds, or I could make it shorter. Okay, at four seconds and 20, four, 23, it doesn't matter. Just make sure your person will be able to read it. I know we have nothing on there right now, but okay. In order to alter this and actually put the text on there that we desire, you're going to click on it. There's three lines, okay? And those three lines, you should see a pencil. Click that pencil to edit. There's three lines once you click on the title. And then you should click on the pencil. Clicked on the title, three lines, pencil. And then you should get something that looks sort of similar, depending on which one you chose. If it has a crown on it, don't use that one because that means they're going to try to charge you for it. So you would just. <coughs> To mention that. There we go. Yeah. There you go. Okay, so everyone's boxes look slightly different depending on which title slide you chose. I chose this one. So where it says primary text, I'm going to put um, the name of the poem. Make sure you capitalize it and then put the author's name too. Again, my text box might look slightly different than yours because I may have chosen a different title slide than what you chose. You can also change the colors and change the font. Delete it. If you decide, if you accidentally picked a crown title slide, you can click on it. There's a trash can. You can click the trash can and then go get a different one. Okay. Once you like the look of it, you can just click save changes. At any point, you can take this kind of annoying blue marker and bring it back and then hit play to see what it looks like. And at any point, guys, if you decide later on that you don't like the color scheme or something, you can always go back and edit it to your heart's content, okay? Anyone need help with the title slide? And make sure you spell things correctly. <laughs> okay, so um, where it says name, you can put the name of the poem and the set of descriptions. Okay. And if you don't want to change the colors, you can change the colors. Give you all a moment to make sure you got the title slide. The great thing about Wii Video is you can manipulate it any moment. If you're, you know, well into it and you're like, you know what? Title slide, I'm not feeling it anymore. You want to change it? You can do that.
All right, any questions about inserting the title slide or editing the title slide? All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to insert your images, okay? Right now, you only have two to three, which is fine. The great thing is when you insert them, you can have them all saved and insert them all at once, or you can do it picture by picture, okay? Totally up to you and what you enjoy, okay? So what you're going to do is everyone click My Media. It's in the upper left-hand corner, My Media. And then we're going to click Import, My Media, and then Import. Once you click import, I think the easiest way to do it is to click browse to select. Now I'm not on a Chromebook, so it automatically pulls up my document folder, but it should pull up your document folder too. And I don't know if you saved it to your drive or your downloads, but if you saved images, they should be in there. Okay. I saved mine to the desktop. So I can click multiple or I can click just one at a time and then hit open. So I clicked my media, then I clicked import. And if you have any image, you're not bound to these images. If you decide you don't want to use them later, that's fine. I just want you to have the ability to practice getting them in here. Now, once they're in here, they're not in your video. They're just in this holding cell, I like to call it, hanging out for you to use when you're ready to use them, okay? But we're gonna go ahead and start. So for instance, if I want this picture of children sleeping to be my first image, I'm gonna click on it, drag it down till it butts up against the title slot. Okay. The images are automatically defaulted at five seconds, but at any point I can stretch it out and make it longer, especially this will be important when you start recording your voice. Maybe you want a particular image to be present as you're speaking. You can adjust that at any point, okay? And after I show you how to do your voice, you can go back later and then adjust the images to match your voice, okay? And then I'm gonna go ahead and bring down another image. I'm just gonna bring a few down, okay? And these are ones I've already uploaded. And then again, at any point, I can go over here and hit play to see what it looks like so far. Did anyone have trouble importing an image or dragging it down? Fabulous. So the nice thing is, if you decide you don't want the image in there, you can always hover over and then hit the trash can and it disappears. Doesn't disappear from up there, just disappears from being in your video. So if you're like, oh, I don't want that yet. Or you can also just move it. Oh, I want this, this picture at, towards the end, so I'm just gonna move it over here for now because I know eventually I'm going to use it, okay? Or if I realize, you know what, I wanted this picture to come second, I can click and drag and then just say insert and push and it will push its way where I wanted it, okay? So at any time you can move your images too. If you realize, oh yeah, I don't want that picture yet or whatever the case is. You can constantly manipulate and move them, okay? Another thing you can do if you hover, you can hit the FX. This is where it allows you to choose some filters. There's not many, but there's some. You know, I told someone in third period he was really into finding black and white images yesterday. But I said, maybe you find an image that you really like, but it's not black and white. Don't worry, because you have the option of changing it to black and white if you want to in the video. Again, not tons of options, but there are some blurred images, lines, introverted color, all kinds of things that you can do. 
But again, that's extra and you can decide if that's something you want to do later on or not. Okay. Another thing that you can do that a lot of people ultimately choose is to add transitions. So that way it's not so blocky going from image to image. If you wanted to, you could click over on the left-hand side. It says transitions. Okay. There's transitions. These are all the different types of transitions. And you can click on them to see what they look like before using them. So here's crossfade. If I wanted to use crossfade, I would click on it and drag it in between the two images. You have to have two images in order to add transitions though, okay? You can't just add an image, add a transition. And then look how it looks up here. It's a little smoother as it goes into. I will tell you though, and this gets people every year, at least one or two people. So they've got all, they've got their title slide. They got every single image. They've got all their voice pieces. Then they're like, I want to add transitions. They go to add transitions and it does change your timing. Okay. So be aware of that. <laughs> if, if Don't wait till the last minute to add transitions or else you're going to want to pull your hair out because now all your timing is shifted like by a second or two and a second or two does make a difference when you're just reciting one line at a time or something. Okay. So keep that in mind. Transitions are not required. Okay. But if you want to use them, I just think it makes it look nice. Okay. Any questions so far? All right. I'm going to pull up a poem real quick. So I can show you how to record your voice. All right. So the next piece is us recording our voice. Um, you're going to go back to my media where you went for the images. My media. Okay. <laughs> I will tell you the first time you go to record your voice, it is going to pop up and say, do you allow it to access your microphone? Click yes, because if it can't access your microphone, then, you know, you're not going to be able to record. However, I will tell you a lot of people have gaming headsets with microphones on it, and I think it sounds even better, but you can record right within your Chromebook too. But if you have a you know, a headphone set with a mic on it, plug it in and use it because I just think it sounds even clearer, but totally up to you. Okay. Um, you also, I'm going to leave it up to you if you want to introduce your poem, like say the title and author's name or not, that's not a requirement, but if you want to, you can. So I'm going to start off with that, just showing you how to record that little bit. And then I'll show you how to record another one. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to just choose Awakening in New York by Maya Angelou. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit this little narrate button. I'm going to hit record and then it's going to count down. Awakening in New York by Maya Angelou. I'm going to hit stop. I have the option of previewing it first to make sure it sounds good. In New York by Maya Angelou. Again, you don't have to say the title if you don't want to. Okay. And then you're going to hit save. Now I will tell you, it will automatically put your audio where this, whatever image you have selected, where this blue line is. Okay. So if you accidentally have your blue line here and you wanted the piece to go there, it's okay. You can move these audio pieces just like you can move the images. Okay. Also the audio pieces save up here. So if you accidentally delete it, you don't have to re-record it. They're up there. Okay. I'll also tell you every single person on the face of the earth hates the sound of their voice. So you can't tell me you hate the sound of your voice because so does everyone else. <laughs> okay. Um, so that's why I have you add music too. I think it softens, <laughs> softens the voice a little bit when we have music behind us. It's not as like, rah, here's my poem, you know? <laughs> okay. So there's that. Now, if I want to read, I suggest not reading the whole poem in one breath. One, we get breathy. 
and we get tired or our, or by the end we're like breathing heavy. Okay. So I would record maybe one stance at a time or one line. It depends how you want to line things up. You do not have to line your voice up exactly with, you know, pictures to represent. You don't have to. But some people are very particular that they want these pictures shown when they're reading that particular line. Okay. So I'm going to click this picture right now. And I'm going to narrate this next line. By the way, you can go in between tabs. So I can hit narrate and then open my tab where my poem is. Okay. So I'll do that real quick. Chord. Curtains forcing their wind against the, I just messed it up. See, and then you mess up and you hit stop <laughs> and you hit record again. <laughs> Curtains forcing their will against the wind, children sleep, exchanging dreams with seraphim. Stop, I can preview, and hit save. The nice thing is to say you let the recording go on for a couple of seconds longer, or you don't start right away, you can lengthen and shorten the audio too. Okay, so if I had a bunch of extra recording, I could just, you know, go back. But again, I can preview. Curtains forcing their will against. That was really abrasive. But so you can match it up if you desire, okay? Line by line. Most of these videos are not going to be more than two minutes. You know, they're going to be short videos you're making. These are poems, not whole novels you're reading. So it's going to be a real quick video in the end, okay? Now, um, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to add audio. I'm sorry, my little screencastify is covering it, but uh, this is where you'd put audio. Okay. So right now I have images. We're not including any video unless you have video you want to add in there. Voiceover. Now we want music. Okay. So you got you have two options for music. If you click audio on the left, there's a bunch of free songs. These are all instrumental pieces. They're free and licensed to use whomever, okay? So you have that option. And you can come up here and preview them. It's going a little slower because I'm recording using Screencastify too, but usually if you click on them immediately, you'll get to hear it, okay? So once you choose one, you're just gonna bring this line to the right down so you can see that line down there. I'll just choose this one for right now. And I'm gonna drag it down here, okay? Now, whoa, this song is way too long for my video. I can click and drag it to match up the length of my video, okay? That is an option. The biggest thing though, guys, that you need to be concerned about is the volume, okay? Make sure the volume is not louder than your voice. And you can adjust that with these blue lines right here. Make your voice louder, make the audio less, but you're gonna have to listen. So that way you know if it's way too loud or not, okay? So here, I'll play this. Awakening in New York by Maya Angelou. Curtains forcing their will. Okay, and it's just a lot of playing and adjusting, okay? But again, you can adjust that right here. Um, let's see if there's... Oh, I guess you, you can click on the speaker too and adjust it that way. You can also click fade. Fade means, say, at the end of your video, you cut the song off and it's pretty abrupt. You can click fade and it will quietly go out of the song, okay? So that way it's not like, song's over, okay? Um, I do want to show you real quick, and again, I'm going to stress this, school has blocked it, and you can't do it at school, but I'm going to show you something that if you want to use it at home, you absolutely can. And that is a converter, and a YouTube to MP3 converter. So maybe there are some beats or instrumentals that you would love to use that aren't in here, okay? I actually have a tab already open. 
So on Classroom, I made a video converting music for your video. The converter is called YouTube to MP3, okay? It's right here. And what you would do, is, for instance, I found this instrumental piece. It's from the musical Waitress. There's no lyrics in it. It's just this. And I like this music. Maybe I, maybe I have a peppy poem. Awakening in New York is that peppy. But maybe I have a peppy poem and I want this music, okay? If I wanted that music, all I'd have to do is copy the link, come to this website, whoops, that you cannot use at school, paste it in there, and click download MP3, okay? And then once I've downloaded it, let it download all the way. It's usually, it's a decent sized file, but not too crazy because it's just MP3. Now I can go back to my video, go back to my media, and I do this in the video as well. Hit import again, like I'm grabbing a picture, only now I'm grabbing audio, okay? I think it went to my downloads, yep. Okay, and then what I can do, oh, let me get rid of that. I can trash that audio I just had and bring down that song. So now, Awakening in New York. My now I have it in there. Okay. So say you have a favorite song on YouTube, you can find any instrumentals to any song that you love. So if there was something in particular you wanted to do, just know, can't do it at school. Sorry. You could do it last year. I'm really upset about this, but securely has blocked it. So, um, and we're not publishing this for to YouTube or anything like that. So there's no rights broken. You're just turning it in for me to watch. So um, don't think you're, you know, oh my gosh, I'm going to go to jail. You're not because we're not selling your video. <laughs> At least I don't plan on it. So please don't. <laughs> okay. All right. So we've got title, screen, images, voiceover, song. I'm going to do one more thing and then I'm just going to let you work. Right now it's auto saving. So you can get out, go back in and work on it. Get out, go back in and work on it. However, when you are completely done, this is so important, everybody look up here. When you are completely done, this step must be done. I, I can't stress enough. You can't just give me like this link because I'm not in your account. I can't access your video. So you have to publish the video, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click finish. Do not do this until you're all the way done because we video only gives you five free minutes, okay? So if you publish and you make a mistake and you have to go back and fi fix it and publish again, you better hope that you have enough five minutes of your five minutes left to publish it again, okay? Because it's five minutes per month and we don't want you waiting to the next month. So I'm gonna hit finish. You're gonna title it the name of your poem. Nobody do this right now, I'm just showing you. Okay, I'm gonna hit set, and there's a couple things you need to do, okay? Keep it in HD, we don't need ultra HD or anything like that, it costs money. But this is really, really important. You need to click this drive button, okay? You have to, because then it will put your finished published form in your drive for you. So that way you don't have to go and mess with links or anything like that. And then what's going to happen is I'm then going to hit export. Once I do that, you can go ahead and close out because now it's just, it's going to take a while to publish your video. Okay. Once you're done, let me, I made a step-by-step -step paper guide as well. Once you're done, you will get an email. Let me make this larger. Ooh, not that large. You will get an email that says, your wee video export is finished. Yay! Okay, you'll know it's done. Then when you go to turn it in, you'll just select file from your Google Drive and it should pop right up in your recent files. If it doesn't, you can just search by what you named it. Okay, it'll be in your files like, you turning in a Google slide or a doc or anything else, it'll be hanging out there. It'll have a little red icon, like a clapboard, maybe clapboard 
um, and it'll say the name of your poem if you named it that way, okay? And I understand this is a whole lot of information, so I'm going to put this video up there, and you have this step-by-step -step guide as well with pictures if you want to go through it that way too, okay? There's lots of resources for you to use. Okay, make sure you use them. And of course, myself and Miss Miller as well. Um, let us know where you get stuck. But please, 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 please don't click that finish button until you're really, really 100% finished. No more edits. Okay. This is due Sunday by 11.59. Okay. And I'm not giving you anything new the rest of the week because I want you focused on this video. It's going to be a big grade for you. Okay. And I want to give you plenty of time at home to be able to record your voice, too. You might want to do it two or three times. So that's why I'm giving you till Sunday. 